Howdy folks, Brett here. In recent videos, we've shown you lesser known features of Microsoft Edge and the Vivaldi browser. So based on viewer requests, we'll now do the same for the Chrome browser. While it's fairly basic compared to most other browsers, we'll delve deeper and show you features you're likely not using that could improve your browsing experience when using Chrome. Let's get into it. At long last, Chrome finally has an official dark mode that is easier on the eyes. For many years, this was an experimental feature, so kudos to Google for adding this and doing what every browser has been doing for years. To enable it, click the three dot menu icon here in the upper right and select settings. It'll be the one here that's second from the bottom. In the left pane, select appearance. Then here on the right for mode, click the drop down. Choices are light, dark, and selecting device will use what you have set for your operating system. In this case, select dark. And as you can see, that is so much better. When you're on a web page, being able to send the tabs or links of an article you're reading to another device you own to read later, for example, from your PC to your phone or vice versa, is pretty cool. There are two ways to do this. You could right click in the address bar, then select send to your devices, then select the device. Or you could right click on the tab itself, doing the same steps. Send to your devices, then select the device. You will need to be logged in on each device with the same Google account for this to work. Just like sending tabs to other devices, if you have your Google account synced with another device, you can actually open tabs you have on other devices on the current one you're using. To do this, click the three dot menu icon in the upper right, then hover your cursor down to history and select history. In the sidebar on the left, select tabs from other devices. There's only one here. You would normally see a list of all the tabs on your other devices. Just click on them to open them. Having multiple user profiles can come in handy to separate out your personal stuff from your work stuff, or if you share a computer with someone else, it helps to keep their data separate from yours. Each profile opens as a new separate browser window. To open a profile, click your profile picture in the upper right, to create a new profile, select Add Chrome Profile. Otherwise, if you already have a profile set up, click on it to open it. Each profile is going to have its own unique separate data, bookmarks, settings, browsing history, etc. Guest profiles can also be useful for those times you have a friend or family member that wants to use your computer to look something up, check email, etc. When they close out Chrome, none of their data will be saved in it. The steps are similar for the last one. Click your profile picture, then select Open Guest Profile. It will let you know that you're browsing as a guest. And like I said earlier, when they close out Chrome, none of their data will be saved, including their browsing history, cookies, and all the other stuff. I'll touch on this one briefly. When it comes to bookmarks, other than the bookmarks bar here at the top, Chrome actually does a terrible job when compared to Firefox and some of the others but you do have some control. To manage them, click the three dot menu icon in the upper right and hover your cursor over bookmarks and lists. In the sub menu, you can hide the bookmarks bar, show all of your bookmarks, use the bookmark manager and import bookmarks and settings from other browsers. Down here under bookmarks, you can change the order. You can also create reading lists for articles that you might want to read more than once. I don't use this at all. When you select Show Reading List, it opens a sidebar here on the right. If I ever learn how to read, I might use this feature. But until then, I won't. Creating tab groups is a great way to keep multiple tabs organized and is especially useful for a specific subject matter or topic. For example, for a vacation you're planning, favorite recipe sites, DIY projects, etc. To create a new tab group, right click on any tab you have opened and select Add Tab to New Group. Give the tab group a name. I'll call this one Text Shopping. Assign a color to it if you want. And you'll see here in the upper left, it changed colors. Go down here and select New Tab in Group. Here you can go to the website to add another tab to that group if you want. Or if you have other tabs open, just right click on them, hover down to Add Tab to Group, and select the group. 
The next time you open Chrome, you'll see your tab group here on the left. Just click on it to open it. Chrome does something interesting with the history of the websites you visit. Other than viewing them in a list format, they also will attempt to group the sites you visit by group. To explore the history of the sites you visited by group, click the three dot menu icon in the upper right, hover your cursor over history, and select history. The initial view here is by date. Selecting by group will organize the sites you visit by topic, no matter the date. You can also get here by going back to the three dot menu icon, hover your cursor over history, and you'll see here that it says grouped history. Click on it. And in this case, they'll show up in the right sidebar. If you ever accidentally closed a tab that you need and you don't remember the exact URL, you could go to the three dot menu, hover your cursor down to history and recent tabs to open them. Let's close that out. An easier way of doing this is to use the keyboard shortcut, which is the control key plus shift key and T key. This will open the last tab you had open. To open additional tabs in reverse order that were closed, you can just keep pressing the control and shift key and tap the T key multiple times. This is more of a tip than a feature that I have to teach people all the time. And it's not Chrome specific. This can be done in most other browsers. When you launch Chrome, you can choose what you see when it starts up. If you don't like what you see, you can change it by going to the three dot menu and selecting settings. Here in the left sidebar, select on startup. Your choices are open the new tab page. That was the page I had it on before entering settings. Continue where you left off. This will open all the tabs you had open the last time you closed out Chrome. And the last one here, open a specific page or set of pages. This will let you add a new page one at a time by entering the URL. And the other one, use current pages, will add all the pages that you currently have open. To remove any of these, click the three dots, then remove. And the next time you open Chrome, it'll open with the pages that you have listed here. If you're living the crazy life and feel adventurous, Chrome has experimental features for you to try out that they call flags. Dark mode used to be one of these. To see what's available in the address bar, type chrome colon slash slash flags, then hit enter on your keyboard. You'll now see a full list of flags to enable and disable. And if you have one in mind, you can search for a specific flag. Let's go back to the top. You'll see this warning here. It says warning experimental features ahead. I would advise not messing around with these too much, unless you're someone that's technically savvy but there is one I would recommend enabling, which makes scrolling web pages a lot more smoother, and it's called smooth scrolling. So you just click the drop down menu and select enabled. Changes you make with the flags will not take effect until the next time you launch Chrome. If you want to extend the feature set of Chrome and enhance the functionality, install Chrome extensions. These plugins are available in specific categories from productivity to entertainment. When in Chrome, to the right of the address bar, if you click the extensions button, that looks like a puzzle piece, you can choose what extensions get pinned to the left of it. To manage the extensions you have installed, click manage extensions. This is where you can enable, disable, and remove extensions you no longer need. And if you need additional extensions, there's a link here on the left side that will take you directly to the Chrome Web Store. If you're looking for suggestions of what extensions to install, we recently released a supersized video with 50 extensions that we recommend. The link to that is in the description. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video helped. If it did, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. What lesser known features in Chrome do you use that you think might be useful for others? Let us know in the comments. And if you're new to our channel, subscribe and make sure to click the bell to not miss out on our latest software videos and other tech related stuff here on Brett in Tech.